And grace be unto you at peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all going to die. And there's nothing that we can do to prevent that inevitability. While there may be many of us who feel that we are invincible or believe we can, almost, we can outlist or outlast everything thrown our way, it seems the old adage from Ben Franklin rings true. Nothing is certain but death and taxes. Now our gospel lesson for today is one that is frequently recited at funerals as it tends to give comfort in Jesus preparing the way for us to be in further relationship with God, to join him in our own ascension. I believe what is important in this passage is that the fact that Jesus knows that his time on earth is coming to a close and his disciples are going to be at a loss for what they are tasked in doing without Jesus in their midst. The incarnation of Christ is ending, just as all human life ends on this earth. Now Jesus knows, just as he has known for all time, that his human existence is temporary, and the relationships he has had with the disciples and all the others who have been with him on this journey are no longer going to be in the human realm. Last week, we were reminded in the 23rd Psalm that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the shepherd walks with us there, as well as beside still waters and through green pastures. However, we are sometimes like the disciples in that we don't hear the scriptures and we fail to take them into our hearts. We find ourselves often on the road to Emmaus where we can't see or hear Jesus by our side. We consistently allow ourselves to remain in the valley without acknowledging to ourselves that Jesus is with us. And like those disciples on the road, Jesus has to constantly come to us to remind us of the goodness we experience with God beside us. Now, we're not always able to handle life's tribulations, disappointments, isolation, anger, or separation from those who we love by ourselves. But Jesus knows this, so he does what he always does. He comes beside the disciples in what is known as the farewell discourse to provide us with the only answer that we need. Jesus goes beyond giving us a roadmap for living in relationship with God and our neighbors. He clearly spells it out and comforts us by giving us the promise of life with God. Jesus proclaims to us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And by being in relationship and following what he has taught us, we will never be alone. Jesus confirms for us that even though we are on a road where we're not sure where we're going, he is there and will guide us to God's dwelling place. A place where we will abide in God's presence. A place where there are many rooms or better yet, rooms beyond our imagination. It may not be a particular place or destination, but we are, in, we are affirmed in the knowledge that we will be with God. And because of our relationship with Jesus, we are being shown the way. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. It's important for us to understand that without God and without the Word, there is no light. Therefore, there is no true life within our people. To believe in Jesus is to believe in God. To see Jesus is to see God. And to know Jesus is to know God. 
What if Jesus had not taken the time to confirm his incarnation or his true being with the disciples? What if he had just gone to the cross without blessing them with the knowledge of being with and of God? That probably would have left a pretty big hole in her upcoming mission to follow Jesus' path. The whole movement may have just fizzled out like a candle in a rainstorm. And Jesus would have left a gaping hole in his relationship with them and with us as well. I think it's pretty easy for us to understand that predicament, as I am sure there have been times in our lives where we have not completed our own farewell discourse. We have left relationships broken and not allowed our hearts to be comforted as well as have been on the receiving end of this brokenness. It's not an easy task for us to take the road, to listen to scripture, and allow God to guide us down the right pathways. And We often feel that no matter how many times we try, there will never be a reconciliation or even a hint that someone in our life wants to understand the pain we are experiencing. Thankfully, we are not left alone, and we have come to know God through Jesus. What a wonderful gift for Jesus to bestow upon his disciples and to bestow upon us. The gift of himself for all of eternity that can never be taken away. Jesus takes the time to tell us that we are destined for greatness and will do more than he did in his human life. He assures us that our relationship with God because of our relationship with Jesus. And Jesus confirms that the Father has already come, is already present in the life and ministry of Jesus. If you know me, and you do, seals the deal with, with us and with God. These are words of comfort for us in that God is revealed to us as having been and continues to be in our midst. There is nothing uncertain for our present or future as disciples because of our relationship with Jesus. Of that, Jesus wants us to be secure. Jesus leaves no doubt for us who he is, God incarnate. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Jesus cannot be any clearer as to who he truly is and will be in the lives of the disciples in his presence and for those of us to come. Take a moment to think of someone in your life who will benefit from the kind of assurance and comfort that Jesus gives the disciples. Take time to reach out. Take that road less travel. Overcome your fear and have that healing begin within you. God is with you and will gently hold your hand through those tough times. And for some of us, that time may seem to have come too late as we are no longer able to have that face-to-face -face or one-on-one -on -one conversation. What we have to understand and acknowledge is that it's never too late. We talked about this last Wednesday, about whether there's a right way or a wrong way to pray, confirming that there is no wrong way to have a conversation with God. And we are sustained in the peacefulness of our relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who are constantly beside their disciples guiding us to understand that there is no final discourse. We are free to have conversation with God or relationships who have gone before us at any time. We can find solace with reestablishing connection to those in our lives whom we truly desire to be closer to us. I'm not saying that this is going to be easy. But the consolation that will come to us as we strive to be in that dwelling place, the 
intimate presence of God is for us the green pasture and the still water. Our life with Christ gives us the power to overcome the brokenness we have endured. Our relationship with Christ in the ascended life, which the resurrection promises, means being with God and with Jesus, sharing in their intimate bond. Listen to the words of Jesus in that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Words of reconciliation and promise given to us as disciples of Christ, enabling us to overcome any valley we encounter. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Amen.